Hi guys and welcome to another video. When they told me that I had to start the day in whores, I got a little bit worried. Uh, but then I realised they meant whores in the Yorkshire Dales. I'm now in the village of Bainbridge. It does appear that we only went to whores so that I could do that gag. This week's vlog is about answering two questions. We are looking at, were the Romans actually in the Yorkshire Dales? There is a view that they didn't do anything here. Um, but then more importantly, what were the implications for the Brigantes? Just outside and towering above Bainbridge is the Roman fort of Vira, Vira. Just outside and towering above Bainbridge is the Roman fort of Vero Sidium. So they were obviously here. Now it's a frustrating sight for us Roman gazetteers because it's all private and we can't get to it. Frustrating that we can't uh, get any closer. I'll obviously put some sort of overlay up to give an impression of the fort of Vero Sidium. Behind me over there, uh, it, you can just make out, you probably can't see it on this, but I can see uh, one of the entrances to the fort. And then we've got the agar of one of the original uh, roads leading out uh, of it. Now, uh, it is believed that the fort was founded during the Flavian period, and it may well have been under the governorship of uh, Petulius Cerealis, Qu Quintus Petulius Cerealis. One of the interesting things about Verisidium, this private fort that we are disbarred from, is its name. It appears to be entirely Latin in its entomology, suggesting that there was absolutely nothing here before, because as we know, the Romans would tend to adopt the local names. That's about the best view we seem to be able to get of it. You can see uh, the uh, earthworks on the top uh, there. It's a very uh, defendable position, but if the name is right and it was in the middle of nowhere, what is it here for? And uh, up here is the roadway. Now, I have found this public footpath which appears to run along the bottom of the fort and interestingly the footpath seems to be on the line terracing down of one of the Roman roads that served the fort. I believe that there were entrances to the north, south, west and east. So we're walking up the, just to be pedantic about it, we're walking up the southern approachway. So there, using my finger as usual, there is the earthworks. And then here, you can see the agar here of the Roman road. There it is, very clear here. You can see the Roman terracing. There's the Roman terraceway coming down from the fort. And uh, even more clearly there, as we can see the terraced cutting. A few nice uh, stones there, natural or Roman. But apart from that, there is nothing else to see here. Not that there is nothing here, we're just not allowed to see it. And it's quite nice here for gazetteers like myself. You can see the uh, long since abandoned part of the road disappears under the wall there. It's basically built on uh, this glacial morass here. The fort is right up on the top of that. I'm in the doghouse again. Before we leave Bainbridge, a little bit more on the fort. We know that it was in use for over 300 years. It was expanded at one point. A settlement grew up beneath it from which this very village probably derives. There were actually five roads uh, radiating from Viricidium, including this fine example uh, here. <laughs> it's another one of those uh, hiding under umbrellas in the wind and rain type of vlogs. Right, we have seen a significant Roman fort right in the centre of the Yorkshire Dales, home to 500 soldiers for over 300 years. A network of five roads radiating out from it. So they were here. In terms of the reasons for the Romans being here, we've seen that there's lead, and that would have clearly been an attraction. 
Uh, the location of the fort that we visited earlier is uh, south of the military zone. So a good sort of fallback position possibly uh, for the defence of Hadrian's Wall and a place to get more uh, soldiers, to get more troops. Now, as a little aside, I don't know if you can see, but there's deer in there. There they are. They're resolutely not moving though. I'm not sure if they're subscribers. There they go. And they're off. I'll dedicate that sequence to Allotment Fox, one of my favourite channels. If last week's vlog was a masterclass in amateur videography, this week's is something of a disaster. I've been fraught by the weather, interfering people, a fort that you couldn't really get a view of. And for this final destination of the vlog, I've somehow forgotten where the Roman marching camp is that we came to see. And the day is not going well. I've just been splatted with mud by off-road cyclists, motorbikers, whatever they're called. Whilst we try to find this elusive Roman marching camp, I'm going to tell you the story of the Romans and the Brigantes. Two key things to note about the Brigantes. They were the largest Iron Age tribe in Britain. They, they had control over a huge area of what we now call Northern England. And the other significant thing about them is that their name, their Celtic name, Brigantes, is by far the easiest to say out of all of them. And at about the same time that the Roman occupation of Britain began, uh, the Brigantes took to their leadership a new queen and her name was Cartimandu and her husband was called Venusius and they were quick to agree to do business with the Romans effectively as a client kingdom. Other tribal leaders, Iron Age tribal leaders in Britain uh, with uh, their tribes having far less pronounceable names weren't so keen on all this Roman malarkey and they put up resistance and one of those was a chap called Caractacus and he found his way from Wales I think it was to the territory of the Brigantes and he sought sanctuary with Cartimandu and Venusius. Cartimandu promptly dobbed Caractacus in to her Roman protectors and he was chained up and sent off to Rome. And that was the last anybody heard of poor old Caractacus. And effectively, that is what was happening all over what we now call uh, Britain and what the Romans called Britannia. The Iron Age tribal Celtic leaders were doing business with the Romans and becoming client states. They were making it easy for the Romans. And when they weren't doing that, they were more preoccupied with fighting amongst themselves, one tribe against the other, and allowing the Romans to just crack on with taking over the place. And you know what they say, what goes around comes around. And that certainly was the case for Cartimandu. Around about the late 60s AD, she decided to leave Venusius. She divorced him, whatever form that took, uh, for an Iron Age Celtic tribe and she ran off with his armourer. I think he was called Voluptuous or something like that. Um, that led to Venusius uh, going into rebellion against her and her Roman overlords. And this was, as I say, in the late 60s. Now, concentrate your YouTube attention spans because that's gonna prove relevant in a moment. And by the way, we have now reached the Roman marching camp. Now there is a sign here, but I don't need it because I know all this stuff. The marching camp on uh, Mastil's Lane uh, is believed to have been constructed around about uh, the early 70s AD. Uh, so we're talking Petulia Cerealis again. Do you remember him? Focus those YouTube attention spans. Similar sort of time to the fort that we were at uh, earlier. Uh, so something was happening in the Yorkshire Dales uh, at that time. Forces were coming in. Now, I wasn't expecting this. There's actually a cross base here. I'm not sure if that's anything to do with the Romans or not. They wouldn't have had Christian crosses at that time, but it's, uh, it clearly is a cross base. 
These sort of earthworks can be difficult to see on the camera. I'm going to run up here. I'm standing on a corner here. So the line comes down here and then runs up here. And then it runs off that way. So I'm stood on the embankment and if I bring the camera up there, you can see it running straight the way up that way. And then same again here, we bring the camera up, Just level that off there. There's the line, we're stood on it. It's running off there. Can you see it? And then I don't think this is one of the uh, proper gateways some uh, later idiot has put a track through, but it does enable us if we scan around there, it gives you a good sort of cut section uh, profile here and you can see the line of the embankment running up there. We've got marching camps like this being thrown up at the same time as forts being built further to the north in the Yorkshire Dales. All of that coincides with Cartamandu and Venusius uh, falling out, him going into some sort of rebel action against her and the uh, Romans. I think we can see what's happening. The Romans had had enough of their partnership with the troublesome Brigantes and it was time to crush them. And crush them they did. That was the end of the Brigantes and Roman client relationship and from then on the Romans were in charge. Nobody knows what actually happened to Cartimandu. She and her fate is lost to history. I'm walking along the top of this marching camp embankment and it was important we got it into the Gazette because it is gradually disappearing into the porous limestone ground beneath it. There's the embankment and I think we've found one of the original uh, entrances to the marching camp and if you notice the bank sort of curves inwards there I think that's called a claviculi. Very faint here but uh, here we're coming to another one of the corners on the marching camp. The Romans certainly knew how to pick the locations for this uh, sort of thing. The view is fantastic. They've got uh, 360 here. You can imagine the uh, Brigantians hiding up in those hills, watching and worried about what's going to happen next, now that their queen has been a bit of a... So, Roman Gazetteers, we set out to answer some questions. We wanted to know, were the Romans in the Yorkshire Dales? Yes, they were. What were they doing? They were mining lead. They were resourcing troops. They were manning a backup position to the military zone to the north. But also, for a period, ugh, for a period in the 60s, 70s AD, they were crushing the largest Celtic British tribe in the whole of the country. And the truth is, the British didn't stand a chance. They were far too busy squabbling and arguing amongst themselves to notice that they were being occupied by a foreign force. I hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog. Make sure you tune in next week. And incidentally, next week's Roman Gazette will be the last in the current series. We've got something new lined up uh, for the next season. So make sure you like, subscribe, click the notifications, all that sort of stuff, so you don't miss out on another upload. Run out of Roman jokes again, so we're going to have an outtake instead. You're all right. Are you doing something? I am, but you're fine. Are you sure? Yeah, please, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, cheers. <laughs> Thanks, cheers. <laughs> Thanks, cheers.